everyone. God bless you and thank you for joining us again for part 10 of our Walk in the Word. We will take another look at what you believe when our Bible teacher, Elder Milton Andrew, comes before us and he will be here in just a moment. But let me first say, as we look at all the things that are going on around us, we know that there's concern. And I want to say, if we have not been doing so, what we really need to do is add prayer to the situation. We know, if we are Bible readers, that there's a lot of information in there, in the Bible, that would help us through these days. Many of you will say, well, I'm not an avid Bible reader, and I don't have time, and we find all kinds of reasons not to go to the Word. But I promise you, there's a way that you can do it. If you're not the one to sit down with the, the Bible and spend that time, get you a notebook and a pen. Get your telephone, turn it on, and call up on Google the Audible Bible. Give it a book and a chapter that you want to start with, and it doesn't matter where you start. But you'll be surprised at what you'll hear that relates to what's going on in today's world. It will give you a better handle on how to take care of yourself and your family. Things that are happening today are no surprise. It's all prophesied right there in the Bible. The wars and rumors of war, the earthquakes and fires, that are happening around the world in diverse places. It's all there and it relates to our daily lives. So do yourself a favor. Turn on the Bible stories and chapters that will help you. Look at the time that you spend in the car driving from one location to another. Make that your Bible time. Take your phone, turn it on, let it play. The Audible Bible speaks to you. It reads the Bible for you. All you have to do is open your ears and listen. We are called to do better. As children of God, we can do better, we must be better. And keep in mind, our families, our children, the whole world is watching us. We have to be a light, we have to set an example. It's not enough to just know how to talk about the Bible. We have to live in a way that God can be pleased with us as well. So. All things are working together for our good, and we will make an attempt to do better and be better. Elder Andrew is going to come now, and he's going to take us to part nine of Take Another Look at What You Believe. God bless you all, and have a good week. Praise the Lord, everybody. <clears throat> it is a pleasure for each Friday to come forth. And I love to hear uh, my wife get a chance to express herself. I hear it all week, uh, which is wonderful. Her intellect, her desire for God, her, her depth and knowledge of the things of God, particularly in time ministry, is fascinated. We're here again um, talking about taking another look, no, talking about laying down a solid foundation Part number nine, and I realize we have been talking about this solid foundation for a period of time, but I can't let it go until God says to let it go. So we know that there's going to come a time that God is going to cut me completely off from talking on Fridays. I mean, there are other things that God is going to take me to. I realize that, but at the same time, it's going to happen that God is gonna come and cut us off from this world as he come and take us back. So God is sending word out to people, hoping that you guys would hear what the spirit is saying unto you, the church and the prophetic church, one that God has already prophesied that would be in existence. We know that uh, the Gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ is that solid foundation. We know you need faith, you need the Word, but the Gospels is all of that. And we realize that the Gospels, as Paul has said in Romans 1 and 16, 
that he's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. My brothers and sisters, it seemed like in this end time ministry that our preachers are preaching the gospels as if they are ashamed of it. They have watered down the precious words of God. God's words are so plain and simple that even somebody at the age of six, seven, and eight can understand these direct instructions that God has given unto the church. We have moved to a more showtime gospel instead of an old time gospel. Now everybody gets up to sing, they want to tear the house down. When they get up to preach, they want to tear the house down. And many times we leave those arenas and we don't know what was said. We don't know the message that God was sending because flesh has gotten in the way. This gospel is good news. The bad news is that each of us were born into this world with a death sentence for the wages of sin is death. And our mothers, we will conceive and we were born and well, we will conceive in iniquity and in sin that our mother conceived us. You know the scripture, Psalm 51, but we came here in sin. Therefore, we have a sentence of death for the wages of sin is death. And it is imperative that we understand that since we are born to die, we need to be born again. And this is what this great gospel come to tell us, how we can escape death, how we can escape uh, the penalty of death, how we can spend eternity in that place we're trying to find on earth, that bliss, that comfort, that peace, that's only going to be found in Christ. The Bible says that, uh, beloved, now that we are the sons and the daughters, I say daughters of God, what manner of love that God has made us this. For we don't know how he shall appear, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall see him as he is. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And those of us who have this hope, purifies themselves, even as he is pure. In other words, my brothers and sisters, the, the, the fact that we plan to go back with God is written in the Bible that we must be holy. It's a part of the gospel message that if we are not holy, we are not going to see him. All of these things that we have adopted in our walk and those of us who call ourselves Christians, you need to stop and take a look at what you believe. Are you at your church because you love the personality of your pastor? Are you at your church because you love that fellowship? I've waged to, to tell you today that the only reason you should be hooked up in a church is that that church is leading you from darkness to light and from earth to glory. Man, you need a place, man, that can, can gather you out of the foolishness and the craziness of this world and to take us to God, to be with him forevermore. For Jesus said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. He said, I wouldn't say it if it wasn't so. He said, I go and prepare a place for you that where I am, ye may be also. And he's coming back for us, you all. What a great privilege that God has given to mere man on this earth. So we have to take another look at what we believe. We have to make sure that the foundation that we are building our hopes on is a solid foundation. The foundation of anything is the basis of what everything has to grow on. Everything is built upon. And if there is a weakness in your foundation, you're going to find cracks, you're going to find deterioration, and eventually, my brothers and sisters, the house is going to come down. You look at the scripture here in Matthew, the seventh chapter. Let's start with verse number 20, just for a minute. Wherefore, verse number 21, 
Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and thy name have done many wonderful works. Man, these are some busy people in the Lord. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. How can this happen? How can this be that a person have committed, that's a commitment you all, his whole life to the things of God, yet at the end when God calls his people in, they're going to be the one that God is going to say, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. How can something like that be? Well, when you look at the gospels of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Paul told us that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God to save. Without the gospel, you take the power out of God's hand. So you got to understand, my brothers and sisters, that whatever God said for us to do, we have to do it. We can't do what Brother Joe and Brother Mike say if it's different from what God has placed in his word. And I told you all many times that when God comes back and when you and I face God, God is not going to base his judgment on nothing else but his word of God. He's going to pull up the Bible and he's going to pull that gospel, the power of God, He's going to pull it up in front of you and say, how or did you obey the Gospels? You can't say what my pastor said. You can't say what Sister Sarah said. You got to tell God, you got to give it back to God. That is the word of God. I obeyed what you said. And when you obey God, there's nothing God can do but to save you. Many in that day are going to say, Lord, 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 my Lord. And Jesus said, today, why call me Lord when you do not the things that I say? Oh, Lord God. It's a simple process, my brothers and sisters. You got to do what the Bible tells you to do. And I told you guys that it, it, it's very simple. When we look at the Bible, we, we, we see that God is saying, even in James, he says, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Let's read on. Verse number 24. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded on a rock. It was founded on truth. Then he says, and everyone that hears these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, it, it, it's, it, it's a hearer and not a doer. You, you're deceiving yourself. Everyone that hears what I say in the Bible as it pertains to salvation and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. So my brothers and sisters, it come down to this. Whether you're going to build your house on a solid foundation, which is a rock, or whether you're going to build it on an a, a imperfect a foundation, which is sand. The rock, the truth, can stand any scrutiny. Just like the house, when the wind blew and the rain came and the storm came and it withstood all of that. The gospels of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can withstand any scrutiny, 
any examination, when you look at what the gospels tell you to do, my brothers and sisters, you don't have to be a, a, a preacher. You don't have to have all those letters behind your name. You don't have to be able to change Hebrews to Greek and Greek to Hebrews. It is plain and simple what the gospel message has given us to do. And my brothers and sisters, you got to shake yourself. In one of the gospel books, uh, Jesus was telling what happened before he went back into heaven. And he said he stopped by and he opened up their understanding that they may understand the spiritual things of God, that they may understand scripture, you all. And when we read and we sit in these churches, we believe everything the man of God tells us because we don't know nothing about scripture. I don't mean to be harsh, but I'm telling you, I was there myself. If the man of God said that we had to go outside and run around the building five times and come back in and we'll save, I believe the man of God. Why? Because he says he is the man of God. And because I didn't know what scripture said, I had nothing to compare with what the man said that I need to do to be saved against what God says, what I need to be saved. My brothers and sisters, we got stop being children and we got to become mature in our walk with the Lord. And we got to start doing those things that God is holding us responsible for. We can't just use the man of God to feed us. We can't just use a Bible teachers to teach us. We got to go before the Lord because there are many spirits that are out here, you all. Satan has a mission and his mission is to steal, kill, and to destroy. Satan has men of God. Satan has churches. Satan has the whole, the whole picture of what God is all about. He got it, you all. And for those of us who are ignorant to his word, and I don't say ignorant as a negative term, I say ignorance as an absence of knowledge of what God is saying, we go for everything. That's why you have over 38,000 denominations. And then you got a Johnny come lately, he said, well, I'm gonna beat those. I'm a non-denominational. Man, listen, it ain't about what's the title on your church. It's about, have you obeyed the gospels of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? You say, well, what is the gospel here? In, in, in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the Bible tells us that this is what I received, Paul is saying, and this is what I'm giving you guys. And some of you believe, and you are saved if you hold on until the end of all that I've told you. He said, he talked about Jesus coming, he died, he was buried, and he was resurrected. My God, he said, this is the gospel. Jesus came, he died, he was buried, and he was resurrected. That's the gospel. But then look at this. Go to with me to uh, 1 Thessalonians. And, and, and I'm going to ask you a question before I answer that question. In uh, 2 Thessalonians, I believe, and, and, and let's look at the 8th chapter, the 8th verse, the first chapter in the 8th verse. He says this, in flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. My God, if I don't obey the gospel, he's saying I'm going to hell. I didn't say that. This is what Paul says in 2 Thessalonians. He says he's coming back with his mighty angels, verse number seven, and he's going to take vengeance on them that know not God and them that obey not the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, if the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection, tell me, Jesus, how do I obey that? Well, understand this, 
that the Gospels are housed in four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Not only do they tell you about Jesus coming to this earth, doing wonderful things, healing, because he did those wonderful works because he's trying to get them to believe that he was the Messiah. And he did those wonderful works and he went to Calvary's cross, he died, he was buried, and he was resurrected. That's what the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all tell you the same thing. When Jesus hung on the cross, Jesus said, it's finished. He says, I have come as the Lamb of God and I've died. Yes, I did. And I've taken the sins of the world away. The Bible say he that knew no sin became sin, giving us the opportunity to become the righteousness of God. This is what Jesus did. And when Jesus did die on the cross, Jesus was finished. But he was only finished with his part. Jesus did this to provide salvation for us. That's what he did. He gave us the open door. Everybody that wants to be saved, all they need to do is to obey the gospels. Oh, you're losing me. Well, after Jesus died and rose again, he stopped by. He didn't go to heaven, you all. Understand this. He was finished. He should have went straight on to heaven. But he stopped by his apostles. In each one of those books, they tell the story. In Matthew 28 and 17, 18, it says, Now all power in heaven and earth is in my hands. He said, Go and teach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Wow, he stopped to tell me this? Yeah, because he wanted a whole nation to know that he was wounded for our transgressions, that he was bruised for our iniquities, and that the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed, both physically, spiritually, naturally. We are healed. He wanted everybody to know that. He said, go. And when you go and teach it to every nation, I want you to baptize them. And then he stopped by in Mark, in Mark 16. He said, go and preach the gospel to every creature. Wait, wait. I don't want you to just stop in every nation, but I want you to preach this gospel the death, burial, and resurrection, what I did to every creature in every nation. And he that believed it, what? The death, burial, and resurrection, the gospel, and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believed it not shall be damned. And then he said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out demons and they shall speak with new tongues. Wow. Then he stopped with Brother Luke. Brother Luke said, look, he said all of these things had to be fulfilled. He said that was written by the Moses, the Psalms. He said all of the prophets, all that had, and all of them talked about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John the death, burial, and resurrection of this Christ who was coming to the earth to give man a new birth that he don't have to go to hell, that he can come to heaven and have eternal life. And he told Mark, he said, look, he told Luke, he said, look, it behooved Christ to have died and rose the third day and that repentance, all of these are, are commandments, you all, and that repentance and remission of sins shall be preached to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. And then he goes down to verse number 49 and he says, hmm, tarry thou for the Holy Ghost. Tarry thou for the, the spirit of promise. Tarry thou until thou art endued with power. My God, these are all things that Je it's in red, you all. Jesus said these things for us to do. And then here comes John. John tells Nicodemus, say, you know what? 
except a man is born of water and of the spirit, he can't even come into heaven. What are you saying, Jesus? He said, except a man, unless you are born of the water and of the spirit. Don't even think about coming this way because you can't. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. And he said, marvel not that I say you must be born again. And then he spends time with them, teaching them, expounding to them. And I believe after 40 days, he goes into heaven. My God, listen to this. Jesus stopped by before he went to heaven to give instructions to his disciples, to give instructions to us about how we are to receive the salvation that God has provided for us. You sit here and think that you don't have to do nothing when the Bible is plain and clear. He stopped by. Man, don't you think he wanted to go back home? But he, it was important enough for him to stop by in those gospel books to tell you and I what we must do to be saved. And then he did something before his death. In Mark, Matthew, the 16th chapter, verse number 13, he asked the disciples, who do you all say that I, who do people say that I am? And they were saying, some people say you Jeremiah, some people say you John the Baptist. But he said, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And, and Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't give that to you, Peter. He said, that was given by my father, which is in heaven. He said, Peter, I'm going to call you the rock. And upon you, this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell, I don't care how you all try to come against this, but this house that's built on the rock can uh, withstand all of the scrutiny, the rain, all of the wind, the sun, everything that comes against it. This gospel that he's talking about, the gates of hell is never going to be able to prevail against it. And he said, Peter, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. See right there, somebody ought to throw their wig off and start running around because then on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts, when Peter preached the gospel to them, telling them about the same Christ that you crucified, all of you nations that were under the sun that was there in Jerusalem on that day, he said, this same Jesus whom you crucified, God has made him both Lord and Christ. And then all of the people say, man, they were convicted in their heart that they had created a great sin, that they were lost. And they said, men and brethren, 120 plus, what shall we do? And brother Peter stood up, you all, with those keys. And he says, repent. That's the same thing Jesus told us to do in Luke. And he said, be baptized in water. That's the same thing that Jesus told us to do in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Be baptized in the name of Jesus, not the titles, not the titles. For there's none other name that God gave among men where we must be saved other than the name of Jesus. Say, baptize them, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For what? The remission, that's the same thing he said in Luke, of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. My brothers and sisters, it can't get any plan other than that. They left there, and that day, the Bible says, those that gladly received and were baptized, they the ones that, believe, gladly received that word, they were baptized over 3,000 souls, you all. And then they said after that, and they continue in the apostolic, the apostle doctrine. In other words, it didn't just start right there, but didn't you find in Acts the 10 chapter at Cornelius' house, while Peter yet spake the gospel, the Holy Ghost fell, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke 
in other tongues. And those of the circumcision, the Jews that was there were astonished because the Gentiles got the same Holy Ghost that they got because they heard them speak in other tongues. Glory be to God. Then Paul finds John the Baptist disciples and he asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? And they said, well, we haven't even heard anything about the Holy Ghost. That's my point to you, my brothers and my sisters. That's the reason why you don't have the Holy Ghost because the church you go to ain't even talking about no Holy Ghost. The church you go to ain't even talking about being baptized in Jesus name for the remission of your sins. That's the problem, you all. You don't have it because you haven't heard it. So they said, man, we haven't even heard of any Holy Ghost. And then they asked him, what baptism were you baptized with? And they say, John baptism. He said, John only uh, baptized you to prepare you for the Christ and the Holy Ghost to come. He said, now Christ have come and gone and he have left his spirit. For everyone who wants it, because everyone needs it. But if you want the spirit, he said he have left it. And he laid hands on them and they began to speak. They received the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues. And they were commanded to be baptized. My brothers and my sisters, it's right there for you. If you are a hearer and not a doer of the word, you deceive yourself. There is no power more powerful scripture than what the gospels has given us on this day. So in other words, what I'm saying, if you try to get in the church before Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you come too soon. And if you try to get in the church after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you've come too late. You've got to come into the church through the gospels of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why the gospels is the power of God unto salvation. If you got saved under any other scripture other than what the gospels have said, you don't have power to be saved. You've been tricked, my brothers and sisters. You're walking around here with a form of godliness, but you're denying the power that can be within you. So my brothers and sisters, I'm saying to you that you must not only believe this gospel, but you have to obey it. Even in the scripture in Mark, it tells you this. It says, he that believeth the gospels, that's faith, and is baptized, that's obedience, shall be saved. Turn with me just for a moment. And I'm about, I'm about to close up. In the 11, 2 Corinthians 11 chapter, verse number 13, he says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if the ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. Those people who preach anything about salvation and don't include the gospel message, are not of God. They can't be of God. Look at 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verse number one. It said, in the latter days, the Spirit says that, that there's going to be a falling away from the faith, that men are going to be seduced by devils, and they're going to be following the doctrines of devils. My brothers and sisters, if they are not telling you how to be saved through the gospels, then knowingly or unknowingly, they are operating under the doctrines of devils. The only way you're going to get into heaven, like it or not, is that you obey the gospels 
of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God say, judgment must begin first in 1 Peter 4 and 17. It must first begin in the house of God. And they say, if the righteous are scarcely saved, what happened to those who obey not the gospel or the ungodly? Where are they going to be? If we who have followed the gospel and the plan of God are scarcely going to be saved, where do those who obey not the gospel fall? Obedience is the thing. Now listen to this. I heard a man that's real renowned in the faith. And he was saying, he was explaining, because you got to get past this. He told his people, the reason why people don't understand, uh, don't, the reason why people are real shaky in their faith because they don't understand what God means when he said, you must be born again. And, and he began to explain that. He said, you must be born of the water and the spirit. And he said, the water part is when every man coming on the earth, he's in the water in his mother's womb. He said, that's what the water mean in that scripture. When John's predecessors, when John, the other gospels, all told you that the water meant baptism. Matthew 28, 19. Mark 16 and 15, Luke 24 and 47. The water means baptism. That's a done thing. It's almost like the first mention found in hermeneutics when God first mentioned something. That's the way it has to be all the way through the Bible. Study, my brothers and sisters, to show yourself approved unto God. A workman, Rightly dividing the word of truth, that not a shame because he or she is rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, those of you, and many have clicked off, I understand that because this is not what they're accustomed to hearing. But I'm saying to you that are saved, the calling is on your life too. You're not saved in and of yourself. You saved to tell your family about salvation. You're saved to tell your next neighbor, no door neighbor, about salvation. You have an ownership. You owe God because that's why God called you. Quit discussing everything and not discussing the Bible because the devil got us that way. We don't discuss politics and we don't discuss religion. Forget politics, but you got to discuss because if you don't tell people, then people are on that road, the Bible say, into the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way, and many there be that lead it into destruction. He say, but straight is that gate and narrow is the way, and only few there be that lead it into eternal life. My brothers and sisters, we got to start telling. We should have been hitting the share button. We should have been doing what we can to make sure that this seed, this gospel seed is going out. And they may not hear it the first time, but it's only a seed. That's what the word of God is. And one planet, God sends somebody else to water it and he gives the increase. We must get our people into the body of Christ for time is short. It's short for me because I'm 71 going on 72. I ain't planning to be around here for 30 more years. But listen, you can be 22 and it's short for you too. With the coronavirus, with these problems, and Jesus said in his word, this is just the beginning of sorrows. In other words, the closer it comes that Jesus is coming, the more chaos that we're going to find on the earth. Satan himself know that his time is short and he ain't even playing with you. He ain't playing with your son. He's not playing with your daughters. He's not playing with anybody. He's trying to take as many with him because he know where he's going. My brothers and sisters, this guy says this. He said, disobedience is not what God looked at as sin. He said, they didn't believe. That's what God looked at as sin. And what I want to say to you in my closing, that faith and obedience is the same thing. If you have saving faith, 
You have a faith that's going to cause you to obey the word of God. If you don't obey, then it's proof that you don't have saving faith. Saving faith is a living work. You can't have it without obeying everything that God has said. That's why the scriptures say, be ye not hearers only, but doers of the word of God. That's why the scriptures say, why you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things that I say. They go together, my brothers and sisters. You got to believe God and you got to obey God. Can't get any simpler than that. And I believe this is the last time that I'm going to come and lay the gospels out for you. I've laid them out for you nine weeks, almost 12 weeks. I've talked to you about the same thing. And I believe God is saying that we're going to have to move on and we're going to have to touch on some other things, but I don't believe I'll ever be able to leave the power of God unto salvation. My sisters and brothers, it's a pleasure talking with you and telling you what thus said the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you, we adore you, we lift you up, Lord, because you haven't forgotten about us who love you, and we haven't, you haven't forgotten about those who don't even know you. You're sending the word out to people all in Puerto Rico, Lord. I get uh, notices and messages from people all over the world that you have sent and touched through this gospel. Now, God, do what only you can do. Touch, heal, and deliver. And God, we shall forever be grateful for you as time draws near us and we're looking forward, Lord, to the day, Lord, that we shall see you face to face. In Jesus' name we pray. My brothers and sisters, you guys be blessed. Continue in the faith. In Jesus' name.